All right, so let's take a look at posture. It's a little more complicated than you may think. So when we look at a person, what we should have in line is the ear, the shoulder, the hip, and the ankle bone. These are just landmarks to make sure that we're in one straight line. What can happen sometimes is, is two different postures we're gonna look at right now. One, that the hips can go forward and put the greater trochanter, which is part of your femur, out in front of the lateral malleolus, which is part of your fibula. So now we're going to see the hip shift into that location. What happens here is when that weight is forward, for whatever reason, is that the pelvis will rotate into what's called, rotate into what's called posterior pelvic tilt. So the pelvis is rotated back, tucking the tailbone in and under. What the body will do in response to this, because it wants to keep our eyes level, because it's just very unnatural for us, is that this increased thoracic curve will push out here in our mid-back. And this can give us lots of areas of pain and muscle imbalance over time. So it's harder to stand up straight because you're fighting against muscles that have been tightened over time. Now I'm going to sit in this position to show you what it looks like as well. Sitting like this can lead to that posture because it's rotating that hip into a posterior position, increasing the thoracic curve and that forward head again. As you can see, the shoulder and hip do not line up. So when you sit, bring your butt back to the chair, make sure the hip is not rotating back like that, and then you'll be happy. So one way to correct this position is to bring that greater trochanter bone in your hip over the ankle bone where it should be, rotating the hip from posterior to anterior what can happen though is you can have too much anterior pelvic tilt which leads us into a separate type of posture which can be confusing this here is forced anterior pelvic tilts also known as upper cross and lower cross syndrome lower cross deals with the lower back and the upper cross is the forward head which i'm not demonstrating here as well the head should be more forward increasing the, th uh, the cervical curve as well as the lumbar lor lordosis curve whereas it's the opposite in sway back posterior has a flattened lumbar curve and a flattened neck in a lot of cases. A lot of these postures pull on these muscles in the back of our neck, from our shoulders down to the back of our head, creating a lot of tightness and stress that we carry. A lot of this comes from the foundation, our pelvis being out of whack. So what we do as chiropractors is we address corrections in a uh, back to front view fixing bones that are rotated to make sure that one shoulder and the hips are also level, as well as the ears being level. But it is your job to correct the side view. So as we can see, anything that's affecting these muscles and our posture is also going to affect the spine and the load in the joints. And that's where arthritis comes from and a lot of other things. Anything that affects the spine will affect the nerves. And that can lead to numerous conditions evolving from the spine since all the nerves branch out from there. So having stress there can affect anything. It can also increase the risks of injury because the joints aren't being stabilized properly. Usually what you have is one very tight muscle, like in this position with the girl, her hamstrings will be very tight and her quads will be overstretched and weak, so she can't handle loads of injury. Same with the neck and the upper back. This is the upper cross and lower cross syndrome. So the hip is rotated more anterior and the stomach is sticking out. They have an increased lumbar curve and the neck is also forward. So this is due to an opposite patterning of the muscles where the quads are tight, pulling the hip down and the hamstrings are weak. You also have different patterns of muscles all the way up your spine. It's really muscle imbalance. So it's not about so much exercise because whether you like it or not, you're exercising all day long. You're either just exercising the muscles that are already strong and, may, and leaving the other ones that are weak to get even weaker. So what we need to do is stretch out the tight muscles the hypertonic muscles, and we just strengthen the weak muscles. No one can strengthen those weak muscles except for you. You just need somebody to show you how. So another question I often get is, how does weight play into this? True, weight can affect the joints, 
but as we see here we have two people they're actually the same weight so what's the difference there does BMI always apply uneven pressure on the joints as it says here is what can cause instability leading to arthritis and joint damage or or allowing the joints to be more easily injured when we have balance between the synergist muscles the muscles that work together to hold the joints into place then injury is less likely and you can handle loads of higher weight so losing the weight is not going to solve the imbalanced issue and often people striving to drop the weight are doing exercises that are going to injure them because they're not in neutral and the muscles are not balanced and that will lead to injury your body is designed to handle the weight you can be muscular to a point and the joints will be fine as long as the muscles are balanced.